it's time for a slight throwback. Wikipedia will tell you that The Wolf Among Us is an episodic graphic mystery drama adventure game, and I would tell you that it's a fantasy neo-noir crime thriller. The point is, especially for a game released in 2013, this one is a lot of things. As you can imagine, based on those mouthfuls of descriptor words, The Wolf Among Us is drenched in genre, and engages in that respective genre fare. Being a narrative-focused game, it's based on the comic book series Fables by Bill Willingham, and is made by Telltale Games, who are known for point-and-click, story-focused games that enact consequences based on your choices. The first thing I noticed when I booted this one up is the way the color pops. From the title sequence to the drop of the first line, the visuals strike you and pull you in, letting you know that this experience has been crafted to suit the exact vision that was intended, and not to jump ahead, but this carries through later on. At the beginning of the second chapter, the visuals throw you into a sequence based on the emotion of where you just left off. I refuse to tell you what happened, because that's a spoiler. When it comes to games like this, learning the story as you go is half of the enjoyment, even though it's been nearly a decade since the initial release. In this story, you're Big B Wolf, one among many other fairy tale based characters who all attempt to lead lives that accommodate with their entrance into our natural, mundane world. You're dropped into the mean streets of the Bronx, New York City, and seconds after, you're asked for your service in ways that are clearly bothersome. The only problem is that despite having been the big bad wolf in the land of fables, Bigby is now the sheriff, and you can tell that this is something he struggles with on a daily basis. Everybody around him talks about how he used to be, and the people closest and furthest to him alike all want to let him know that if he just treated people more kindly, things would be easier. This is a principle that I've tried to stick by within my gameplay experience. Like I vaguely mentioned before, the way this game functions is that as you progress through the story, you're given dialogue options that lead towards different paths. Eventually, every now and then, you're given a quick time event, or you're led to a grand decision. The neat thing about this being a video game and not just a choose-your-own-adventure novel is that at the end of a chapter, you can look at a percentage list to see how other players decided to act. It's important that you think about your responses while you play, because beyond your actions simply having implied consequences, the characters in this game are designed to remember what you say and do to them. Do you have any idea how much it costs to have an entire family in glamour? I don't make the rules. Sorry. I can't give you a free pass on this, Toad. My hands are tied. Right. Right. I remember all kinds of memes that ripped off the system from within these kinds of games, but the first time I acted and I was told Toad will remember that, I said words that I'm not allowed to say on this show. The consequence system from within this game is so engaging to me because I know that other games have had systems where consequences are heavily advertised as mattering immensely, but they don't really lead to that much. Mass Effect 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 are great examples of this. When I play games like this one, I have a rule that I can't google anything about them until I've finished it so I won't really know how much every single thing will have mattered until I've rolled credits on chapter 5. That being said, this game has managed to surprise, annoy, and further engage me when I think about how Big B has been told to be nice to people around him, so I don't steal money from people, and so when I need money in a scene that matters and I don't want to disappoint the people that are there, I end up broke. These are the kinds of things that make me pay attention. I care when a game shows me an array of interesting circumstances and then grabs me by the shoulders and says, Hey, do you see this? This is all actually important. We put this stuff in here for you. Go nuts. The Wolf Among Us is a cohesive piece of work that oozes style while showing it's got substance out the wazoo. The music is on point, the voice acting is stellar, and this next point comes with a little bit of baggage. This game is clearly dated, and the first time I loaded it up, 
I encountered an error by simply mashing during a quick time event. Sometimes animations will look choppy due to just how many different sequences can possibly take place within a given scenario, and so the game itself doesn't seem like it's sure what's going to happen next. Despite those cracks at the seams, the art of this game is standout. The graphics click within a style that blends near seamlessly with the painted style of the backgrounds, and these are actually reasons that I'm excited to see the sequel flourish within an updated engine, and would like to see a remaster put a fresh coat of paint on it all. It all comes together as a phenomenal, one-of-a-kind experience. The Wolf Among Us is a gem from years ago that I just happened to overlook.